Hey everyone, this is Kevin from the chesswebsite.com. If you keep up with any chess news, you may have recently heard the name Carissa Yiff. At nine years old, she's become the youngest U.S. chess expert of all time. Chess expert being a rating of 2,000 or above. So I thought it'd actually be interesting to go over one of her recent games since, again, younger players, they just play with so much passion. Many times at the Grandmaster level, you know, at 20 moves, they're just playing for a draw. We're younger players, they make some mistakes, but it's really exciting chess. And some of these players are extremely, really strong in their game, especially Carissa Yip, who is already a chess expert. So this game actually comes a couple months ago. She took place in the online championship, and for the ages 10 and below, she actually won the event. So I thought it'd be really great, since she's going to be a powerhouse in chess for many years to come, to go over one of her games. And so we take one of the feature matches from that, her opponent playing white, is Justin Paul. Around this time he was around 1900, so a very, very strong player in his own right. Playing against Carissa Yip, who is going to be defending with the black pieces. Justin starts the game out with pawn to d4. Carissa responds with knight f6, and then we have pawn c4, pawn e6, knight c3, and then the bishop coming down to b4. Now this is the Nimzo Indian defense, very common for black to respond in this way. Again, pinning down the knight here to the king. White has a few options. He can go ahead and hold on to the bishop pair and just allow Carissa to go ahead and take this knight on c3 and then have doubled pawns on the c file. Another option which Justin took is to bring his queen here to c2. This is the classical variation allowing black to take the knight and white can recapture with his queen. Although his queen is moved twice, white doesn't have to deal with the doubled pawns here on the c file. So that's kind of what Justin's going after right now. Chris Carissa decides instead of taking with her bishop here on c3 to go ahead and play pawn here to c5. Because the queen on you know, d1 is moved, it's no longer protecting this pawn here on d4. So it's going to be kind of a pain for Justin to hold on to this pawn for a long time. A lot of times in this particular case, you'll see the pawn actually take here on c5 just because white doesn't, have to, doesn't want to have to deal with this pawn and all the other pieces attacking this pawn. In this particular case, uh, white played pawn here to e3, kind of solidifying this pawn chain right here, and also opening up the door for this light square bishop to defend this pawn on c4. Krista decides to go ahead and take on d4, and white recaptures with the pawn on d4, and then the, the pawn striking forward to d5. Now, white could take right now with the, his pawn here on d5, but really no need to. Instead, decides to go ahead and develop more of his pieces towards the center of the board. Carissa has a few options. Um, one of the, the stronger options would be to go ahead and castle. There's no reason right away to go ahead and give up this pawn right now. It gives white a very active position. In the game though, uh, black does decide to go ahead and take this pawn on c4, giving up that center pawn here from d. On, from, from d5 and white recaptures with his bishop here on c4. So in this particular case, White has a very active position. He has both of his knights in the center of the board. He has a bishop here on c4, just eyeing down on the king side from black. He also has an aggressive queen right here on c2, which kind of opens the door for him to really get involved into the game. Also, after the king castles, he's going to be able to easily get his dark square bishop involved into the game, attach his rooks over here. The only key weakness that White really has right now is he does have an isolated pawn right here on the D file. So it's very important that black starts to put a lot of pressure on this pawn on D4 and over time really, really weigh down all the pieces for white to try to defend this while black kind of overwhelms white. Krista now castles on the king side. Very nice, castling, getting some king side safety there. And then white does the same thing, castles on the king side and then Krista brings her knight over here to d7. Justin brings his bishop up here to f4. And again, white really has a very active position. Both of his bishops dominating the center of the board. His knights dominating the center of the board. So again, it's really going to be, can Justin continue to dominate the center of the board and continue with his very, very aggressive play style? Now from here, Krista decides to bring her knight over here to b6 attacking the bishop here on c4. The bishop swings back here to d3. Less active position, but again, it was being under attack right now. And then the pawn comes over here to h6. Kind of a prophylactic move, stopping the bishop from coming here to g5. The knight coming over here to g5. Kind of a waiting move to see where white's really going to go right now. 
definitely makes some sense. White has a few options. If, if you kind of look at it, you could bring the rook over here to e1. This is a semi-open file. You can bring the rook over here to c1. This is an open file. Rooks definitely belong on semi or open files where they have a lot of room to breathe. Bring it over here to c1. Makes a lot of sense, although there's some pieces right now blocking it. It's pretty easy to move these pieces out of the way. You could play queen here to b3, getting it out of the way, attacking this bishop. As soon as the bishop moves, you can now get your knight involved into the game. And then all of a sudden, your rook is completely dominating the c file. And this bishop here on c8, it really even hasn't, hasn't had a chance to move. So those are some of the options that white has. Justin decides to go ahead and play knight here to e2. Somewhat of a passive move, does have a very aggressive position, decides to kind of bring his knight back here to e2. And then black plays the knight here to d5. More of a centralized square for the knight. Again, over here on b6. Wasn't doing too much, but now it can really start to dominate being here in the center of the board. White now brings his bishop back here to g3 since it was being attacked. And then we have the bishop swinging back here to d6. Black looks like she's okay with exchanging the bishops off, and that's exactly what Justin does. Taking, and the queen comes here to d6. Again, now a very active square for this queen here on d6. It can really get involved into the game, starting to put more pressure on white. And now we have pawn here to a3. Again, kind of one of those uh, defensive moves. It does block off this b4 square, so the queen can't come here to b4. The knight can't come here to b4, attacking both the queen and the bishop here. So definitely a nice little waiting move for white as he tries to see what black's going to do. Carissa decides to go ahead and bring her bishop here to d7, kind of opening the door for the bishop to come here to c6, and then potentially later on to d5. Doesn't want to right away bring her pawn out the door, so instead decides to kind of go the longer route with her bishop right here. And then we have the knight coming here to e5. This is a nice little outpost. Always be looking for the outpost. This isolated pawn, although it doesn't have a lot of defenses right now, it does serve as a nice little outpost. So it's really going to be difficult since black doesn't have a dark square bishop. This is really going to be hard to chase away. And so just to go ahead... Justin goes ahead and takes control of this central square right here on e5. And then Carissa decides to go ahead and play rook over here to c8. Again, controlling those open files are essential in chess to get your rooks really, really involved. Now, White's going to play over here, queen here to b3. Again, trying to make sure that it's still an active queen, controlling somewhat of the center of the board. Then we have the bishop coming over here to c6. Definitely wants to make sure protecting this pawn here on b7. Also, again, more centralized, defending this knight here on d5. Now, in this particular case, it's white's move, but we've pretty much reached equality. Both sides have the same amount of material, but they also really have about the same amount of material that's actually in play, that's actually doing something. So, white maybe has a little bit more of a lead as far as, you know, his knight here has a nice little outpost. White does have an isolated pawn right here. All things equal, though, this is pretty close to equality. So it's definitely interesting to see how both sides go from this and actually start to take an advantage one way or the other. Justin decides to go and bring his rook over here to c1. Again, putting his rook on the open file, always a good idea. And then the knight comes over here to b6. White's going to now play bishop here to b5. Um, again, wasn't doing much here on d3, and this was a very active bishop here on c6. So white's definitely okay with just exchanging these bishops and having a queen here on b5. Carissa decides she doesn't want to have anything to do with that and plays bishop here to d5. Nice central square for the bishop. It can pretty much control the entire board, and it's also attacking the queen here on b3. Now the queen swings over here to e3, and Carissa actually missed a move right now, and that is the bishop coming over here to g2. Now, again, even grandmasters make a lot of mistakes sometimes. It's very, very difficult to find the best move in all particular cases, especially when you are sacrificing a pawn, or excuse me, a bishop here on g2. But she did have the option to take with her bishop here on g2, and if the king recaptured with his king right here, uh, then the queen could come to d5 check, and it would also be forking the bishop here on b5. 
So that was definitely a mistake from White as he played his queen over here to e3. Could have tried something. Uh, even his queen over here to, let's say, g3 would have made a lot of sense. Still protecting the center of the board, protecting that pawn here on g2. D definitely would have been better. Instead, Carissa plays pawn to a6, which, you know, I have a weird sense of humor, but I think it's kind of funny that the move that she does play... Um, pretty much forces white to retreat the one move that was in danger. So uh, this bishop here on b5 is forced, forced to move to come back to d3, and now black can no longer play this bishop here to g2 uh, because the bishop is safe. Black now plays the queen back here to b8, which I find a little odd. Um, again, Chris had a very, very great position. Uh, there was no threat to the queen here on d6. And d6, as you can probably imagine, is a much more threatening position than back here on b8. It's kind of tucked back here. It's not doing nearly as much. And so it's definitely interesting to see that the queen come back here to b8 with the position that, that Carissa had. Now the pawn's going to push forward to f4, which I really, really like from white. Because it, it, if you kind of look at the board state from white, it says, okay, the queen has now retreated back to the queen side. There's kind of this small little opening where... Okay, there's less pieces on the on the king side, so I can start to go ahead and put a lot of pressure on the king side and kind of overwhelm my opponent on the king side. So f4, I think, is a really, really strong move, um, and it kind of shows the creativity that you know even kids under the age of 10 have, because a lot of players are not playing this f4 because they think it's too aggressive or it kind of opens up the king. But the king's really going to be... You know, in trouble if, let's say, black had a dark square bishop. That would be a little more trouble for whites. Um, but as soon as this queen moved back over here to the queen side, white uh, right away attacked on the king side. So black decides to go ahead, because of this, to go ahead and start to take up some of that material, bring it back over to the queen side. And so the rook takes here on c1, and then we have the rook retake here on c1. Carissa now responds with her rook over here to c8, and then the rook comes here to c5. Would have been completely fine if, you know, white traded off, you know, rooks, but, you know, that's okay. Instead, the knight's going to come here to a4, uh, forcing the rook to move. After the rook comes back, now there's going to be an exchange. Now the bishop comes here to c2, attacking. It would definitely be a mistake for the knight to come here looking like there was potential weakness on b2, free material. But the queen could actually come to c3, and this would be definitely bad for black, as black would end up losing this knight here. doesn't matter where they go, it would end up falling. So definitely good on Carissa to see this free material on, on b2 and not take it. Instead, decides to go ahead and bring the, the knight back here to b6, getting ready to do something else with it, because you definitely don't want to leave your knight on the rim it's just not very active in the game so the queen's now going to come over here to c3 and then we have the bishop coming here to e4 black is definitely okay with having a very active knight in the center of the board and that's exactly what white allows black to do so after the the capture and the recapture uh, black has a very active position right here the queen comes back here to c2 and then we see knight to d6 and we'll go through a couple more moves we have queen here to c5 and then we have the queen coming over here to d8 which again defends both of these knights here on b6 and here on d6 which is nice but again this queen is not nearly as you know aggressive or involved in the game as chris would like definitely not as involved as the queen was earlier in the game before she brought it back here to b8 if we kind of look from both sides White's main goal is to keep the queen at bay, make sure that Krista cannot get that black queen involved into the game, and really start to, you know, push and put pressure on black. Now, black's goal is going to be a little bit different. Her goal is going to be to not only attack this isolated pawn here on d4, but start to get her queen involved into the game and play less of a defensive game and start to put white on the ropes as far as a defensive position which right now white is not white has all the momentum in the world so those are it's kind of both sides that's what both sides are kind of thinking right now so white now plays pawn here to b3 uh, which stops kind of the the movement 
to a4 uh, to c4, which is fine. Um, and now we have knight here to to d5. I'm not even really sure that black really wanted to come to c4, a4, but again, you know, b3 stopped it right there. So we have uh, d5, which is a nice little centralized square for the knight. And then we have pawn here to g3. Solidifying this pawn chain doesn't have to worry about protecting, you know, his pawns with his minor pieces. So this kind of solidifies that. And now Justin, you know, should probably focus on, you know, blocking out this queen and then starting even to get his king involved into the game. So now we have the knight to e3, and Chris is starting to play much more aggressive. And now the queen comes back to c1. So again, playing kind of a defensive role. And now the knight comes back here to d5. And now the knight comes back here to d3. Instead of, you know, bringing the queen back into the action, white started to retreat back and plays the knight back here to d3. Um, and Carissa takes advantage and plays queen over here to b6, getting her queen involved into the game uh, since white's kind of allowing her to do that. And then the knight comes over here to c5, and the queen comes here to a5 attacking the pawn on a5 also attacking the knight here on c5 and then pawn here to b4 which is it kind of looks okay uh, because it's you know saying hey you, you got to move somewhere but Krista doesn't mind just bringing her queen here to b5 attacking this knight here on e2 and really opening up the door to get her queen past kind of this fifth fourth rank right here and really start to do us some damage and now the queen here on c1 from white's not doing much and is playing much more of a passive game just because of that one subtle move of bringing the knight back instead of kind of blocking and, and forcing black to really not do anything so from here we have the king coming here to f2 kind of blocking uh, the attack on the knight on e2 now we have pawn e6, or pawn b6, excuse me, forcing the knight to move. So the knight moves. And then we have knight to e4, great centralized square for this knight, attacking the king here on f2. After the king comes here to e1, now we have the queen to d3. The queen is completely in white's business right now. Really, really hard for white to do much of anything. Black's king over here on g8 is just completely hanging out. It's kind of interesting to see... You know, just six moves ago, Black was kind of uh, in this, okay, what do I do state? And now, you know, seven, eight moves later, Black's in complete control. And so the queen comes over here to d1, and now the queen swings over here to f3. Again, there's not much White can do. Uh, you know, it's going to be checkmate pretty soon. The queen swings back over here to c1 uh, so that, you know, if the queen comes here to f2, which is exactly what it does, the king can swing over here to d1. Uh, but then after knight here to e3, Justin decides to go ahead and resign because the only way to stop this is for the queen to actually take here on three, on e3. So phenomenal game, really, really impressed by some of the youngsters in the United States playing at such a high level of chess. Um, it's, it's one thing to do analysis of a game when you can study it and kind of look at positions from all different angles. It's another thing to actually play. And just to see these youngsters play such a high level of chess is really, really encouraging. It's always, I even learn a lot uh, just from watching, um, you know, such great chess. So hopefully you guys enjoyed something. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing some of uh, the younger generation play chess at a high level. And I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.